You... you can speak? It said, sounding some mix of terrified and baffled. I feel like I should be the one asking that question, I said to the small blue creature. I... I'm sorry, the small nymph said. For what? I wondered. I'm sorry for trying to make you my familiar. Even after I realised you were an intelligent species, I still attempted to put you under my control. I was young, and my instructor, he said, he told me I should continue with the ritual. I didn't want to, but I was too afraid to make my objections known. I deeply apologise. The nymph bowed his head in shame. Why summon me in the first place? I asked. The nymph raised his head and looked at me, her eyes filled with remorse. It was a part of my training. I was a student and was undergoing a test, the right of dominance. I was ordered to summon a creature as powerful as I could, then dominate his mind and force it to become my familiar. Familiar? I had heard that term before, but couldn't quite place where. A being meant to serve as a guardian, servant and ally, the nymph explained. I nodded my head that I understood. You wanted me to be your servant? I questioned. Part of me was offended, part of me was proud to be considered powerful. The nymph winced as if in pain. I... yes. The nymph spread its wings and bowed once more, this time with his whole body. I see how wrong I was now. A Nurme as weak as myself could never hope to be the master of a being as powerful as yourself, Great One. Nurme? Great One? I thought to myself. Is that what your species is called, Nurme? I asked. Yes, Great One, it answered, still bowed. Why are you calling me a Great One? You slew the Borok in a single attack of thunder and metal. It was a ritual more powerful and devastating than any of my people have ever seen, she explained. Um, right. I didn't know how to respond. My name is Jake, you can just call me that. The nymph stood up. Jake, allow me to offer my life as compensation for attempting to control you and for forcing you into our fight against the Borog. I only ask that you spare my people from your wrath. Whoa, 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 chill out. There was no need for all that. I admit that I was pretty upset by everything that happened, but I'm not going to kill you over it. The little nymph sighed deeply, and his wings drooped. I hadn't realised how tense it must have been for all of this. Thank you. What is your name? I asked. I am afraid I do not possess a name, she replied. You don't? I asked, surprised. It would be a waste to name a lowly fifth-level mage like myself. Only those of great importance are honoured with names and titles, she explained. Oh, well, would it be okay if I gave you a name? I wondered. You honour me, sir, but please don't trouble yourself. I am not worthy of such a gift, she said. Well, I need something to call you. It would be a lot easier on me, I said. Then I happily accept, the nymph chirped excitedly. I looked the bird over for a minute, thinking carefully about what to call it. She had an air of magical wonder and poise, so I figured I should try and do something with that. How about Suma, I suggested. She flapped her wings and chirped loudly. A wonderful name. Thank you, Great One. Seriously, just call me Jake, I told her. Can I ask you a question, Suma? Why would a student need a powerful familiar? For the war, Great... Uh, Sir Jake? War? I asked. Yes, sir. Our people have been at war for nearly a decade now with the Southern Union. Who are the Southern Union? Our world is divided into four factions. Each one is powerful and in control of huge swaths of land. The Southern Union controls the entire continent of Oriza and its surrounding islands. They are perhaps the most influential of all the factions, and the cruelest. I see, but why would a student need to worry about a war? Once we finish at the academy, all students are considered full mages and are sent to fight, Suma explained. I was shocked. They send you to war as soon as you graduate? Yes, this is the way it has been for nearly a decade. The war is not going well, we've been outmatched since it began, so they need everyone who has the ability to cast our rites and rituals to join the military. But do you want to? What happens if you say no? I wondered. I volunteer, but there have been instances of people who are under orders to report for duty refusing to. What happened to them? Some were imprisoned, others were made examples of. Killed? I nearly shouted. Soon as feathers ruffled, and she reeled in surprise. What? No. They were publicly announced as cows and ostracized by their families. That's still not great, I said. No, it is a pitiful existence indeed. Those who refuse to fight against the oppressive Southern Union deserve what they get, though. Refusing to stand against an enemy is the same as helping it rise to power. 
What makes this Southern Union so bad? I asked. Suma shook her head and spoke softly. They have killed or enslaved Countess Numi. Their poor are treated as little more than beasts. The rich stand on the backs of the innocent and exploited any who speak out against their leadership are publicly executed. They sound pretty bad, I said. Indeed. Our soldiers do what they can to keep them at bay, but their army is strong. Most of the wealth of the nation goes directly to it. We are barely able to hold our territory. We lost the island of Sangu just last year. I thought for a moment about my life, about these people, and about everything I have done over the last few years after meeting Suma for the very first time. I liked what I had been doing, all my studying and training. I did it all so that I would be ready if I was ever taken again. Now that I was here... Is there anything I can do to help? 